Hi, and welcome to this week's webinar of Figured 101. In this webinar, we're going to be going through what Figured is, how it works in tandem with Zero, and how you can get your farming specific outputs out of Figured. Today, you've got Nick Barraclough, Partner Success Manager, taking you through the product side of today's webinar. And then you'll have Paddy Terry, who's going to take you through a Q&A towards the end. We're aiming to spend about half an hour on product and then about half an hour answering any of your questions. So if you do have any questions, feel free to save them, post them through using the Zoom chat and we'll get to them towards the end. If you have a question while you're using Figured, in the bottom corner of every single page is this little green chat bubble and that's the fastest way to get in touch with our support team. We have really fast support times, this is done inbound through chat and if there's something that we can't explain over text, we're always happy to pick up the phone and give you a call. It's inside of this green help centre as well that you'll see a recording of all of our help docs, previous webinars and you can read about some of the other farmers who use Figured on our blog. Very cool to the way that Figured works with Xero is that the tools are all in sync with each other. It's just like a large product with different modules, except the accounting module is called Zero, and the farming and the reporting is called Figured. This allows you to use the best tool for each job. Zero has a best-in-class bookkeeping and accounting tool, and Figured has a best-in-class farm reporting tool. We built this because we know that different teams need different requirements, and this means that the Agri team can use an Agri-specific tool. There's no more adapting spreadsheets or rep reporting with custom reports. Figured is also future-proofed and flexible for a wide variety of different operations, and this includes diversified farms. So whether you're in dairy, livestock, or arable, you'll be able to build trackers inside of Figured and get the outputs that you need. What's really cool to this too is that because you have Zero at the center of your accounting stack, that means that you've got Figured for your farm reporting, and you've also got the rest of the Zero ecosystem. So if you have other businesses involved, you can then bring in other add-ons so that you have the best-in-class tool for their industries. We built Figured because we needed to bring together the whole farming team, whether it was across the accountant, the banker, a consultant and the farmer. We wanted to bring everyone together so that they have A, access to real-time financial data, and B, they can build out their budgets in the same platform so that everyone is working off of the same page. These are some of the things that we heard from our farmers while we were building Figured, and we found that this works really well as a collaborative tool. It's up to you whether you want to invite other people into the Figured file, and there are different user permissions so you have lots of flexibility in there too. Using Figured is all around understanding the now, working towards the where and building out long-term plans, and coming up with the how, so the budgeting and how we're actually going to put all of this into action. So bearing this in mind across the now, where, how, I'm going to touch on three different parts of the product that feed into each of those use cases. Beginning with the now, Figured is used for production tracking across arable, livestock and inventory. The reason we put all of this together is so that you can track farm profitability and that's really key to the way that Figured works. It's also used for gross margin reporting, so we're using the actual financial data from zero and then using that to drive our understanding of what's happened already on the farm, understanding the now. To tie this together, it's then good to know where you want to go. Now, when it comes to building plans across, say, 5 or 10 years, it can be really hard to see the forest for the trees. So scenarios allow you to pull this up a step and look at it top down. So rather than building out monthly plans across, say, a 5-year period, you can build out these annual plans very quickly using a scenario that are fast to build and they're also easy to share and copy. Now we find these work really well for farmers who need to... Uh, go for lending applications with banks, because this already outputs with a five-year cash flow, P&L, and balance sheet, as well as all of these visual indicators on here. But we'll go into that in the product soon. So once we understand that now, we can start to vision and come up with where we want to go. Finally, to put all of this in action, it's all about the how, and that's done with flexible planning inside of Figured. Because we have this live financial data coming through from zero, we can use that as our starting point and then build your plan as long into the future as you like. That means you can pick it up at any point in the year. Say if you're partway through your financial year and you only need a six-month plan, you can go ahead and just work forward. Then 
After you make that change, you can save a copy of that. We call that a snapshot inside a figure. Go back in a few months, revise your forecast, and you'll still have that copy of the original plan that you built out, so you've got really flexible planning tools inside of here. Where figures coming together then, just reiterating, is understanding the now, using that live financial data from zero, building out a plan for where, using scenarios, and coming up with how we're going to achieve this by using flexible planning tools inside a figure. To get all of this out, there is really powerful reporting inside a figure, and we think that it's really important to collaborate and share this across the whole farming team. You'll hear that we actually talk about the farming team quite a bit. We didn't build figure for just one person. We see it as being the powerful tool that an accountant can drive, a farmer can benefit from, a banker can receive outputs from, and a consultant can work on and, and edit in as well. So Figured is all about this collaborative reporting, and all of the reports that you make inside of Figured can be shared out, whether you give someone access to the file itself, or whether you just pull out a PDF or a single copy of that report. This is really powerful for these three types of reports. I've picked them out because I find that these are the three most popular ones. Getting an idea of gross margins, looking at production reports and analyzing cash flow, and for those who do budgeting, you have that fast variance analysis. Because we have that data flowing through automatically from zero, and you've got your budget inside of Figured, we can marry those up together really quickly. Then you can save those reports, comment on them, and add your own annotations around them, and then share them in a confident and secure platform. Now I've brought this up, and don't be overwhelmed by this, but I wanted to show you how the data then goes from zero into Figured. So all of the numbers and all of the finances and all of the transactions that come through from zero flow into the figured allocator. Now, most of this can be automated by creating allocator rules. So when you're doing your coding inside of zero, you can tag those invoices using a thing called a tracking option in order to then have figured automatically post that through to the right crop season, the right livestock tracker, and then post it through to your reports. For non-farming transactions, you don't have to allocate them. You can dismiss them too. And then for the direct costs, things like the seeds and the food and the sprays, they can be manually allocated into our inventory tracker, what we call the product tracker. And then quantities of chemicals or anything else inside of that tracker can then be applied to different enterprises like crop seasons or like livestock trackers for feed so that they then flow through again to that figured specific reporting. Then for those who run accounting practices where you have multiple clients, you've then got further benchmarking later down the track as well, which you can explore too. Without further ado, I think the best thing to do to learn this is really just to spend time inside of the tool. I always joke that Figured is almost like a contact sport. So let's jump inside of the product and take a look at things now. So we're now inside of a Figured file, and the very first thing I want to draw your attention to is watching what that date selector at the top of the page says. This date selector is telling you, A, what financial year you're working in, and this is determined by your financial year inside of zero. B, what type of data you're looking at, whether it's actuals or an actuals and a forecast in there. And C, how much data from zero is flowing through. In this case, and usually, we'll set this to actuals to last month, given that last month will always be the last complete month full of actual financial data for you to work with. So bear in mind what that date selector looks like. Now we're going to head through to trackers, and trackers are where we start adding the production through to the finances. You'll have different trackers for different types of enterprises that you run. For example, you can see that I have some livestock, a milk tracker for the dairy, I have a product tracker here for the things that I've bought, like my seeds, my fruit, my spray, as well as a few tracker groups here for my harvest. And inside of my harvest, you can see, for example, I've got some wheat and some kale and some oats. These trackers are where we add the tonnage, where we add the hectares, or we add the number of livestock that's inside of a herd. So if I open up my winter wheat, for example, this is then going to take me through to a quick gross margin analysis for me, as well as a view towards my break-even. And you can see straight away that we get this three-way comparison between my, act my annual plan, which is like a budget, the actuals plus my plan, so that's saying what have I done so far and what am I planning through into the future, 
a variance between the two and you can see everything's all green on my farm and then we have a market price which is a quick way to see what happens if you get different market prices for the commodity you're working in so in this case I've got winter wheat if I wanted to quickly see what could happen if I could get say 155 pounds per ton I can check that under my break even here and adjust it under here and then figure it'll recalculate that for me which I can then contrast to what the break even price would be and what my current estimated price is based off of my forecast. As we work our, pay, our way further down on this page you then get to see things like what area we've got this planted across so in my case 140 hectares on three fields my harvests and products that I've harvested and my yields and then some of the costs and other income that I have on here now in this particular case don't look too close at the numbers because this is of course a demo farm and it'll look a lot more realistic with your own farm or your own clients on board now we have arable seasons generally tied to a product and to a harvest year so that means that we can keep track of the costs that don't perfectly align with a financial year because in farming it very rarely does uh, and in this case I've got my winter wheat 21 if I then wanted to start planning for next year's harvest I would then create a new tracker called winter wheat 22 and then I'd start recording my costs related to that so this is just capturing those costs I like to think of it basically between drilling and through to harvest then later on when we start recording our sales you'll then find that figure allocates the right income to the right season based off of the harvest dates that you record furthermore when we look inside of the product tracker this is where we keep track of the different things that you may have purchased on the farm or grown so in this case I've got some hay and some wheat grain but I've also got some sprays that I purchased down here and this gives us an idea of the quantity that we have on hand the average price per unit which is really important for looking at inventory uh, for stock that you've harvested and then evaluation for that and this is really handy for accountants too who want to get a sense for what you've got on hand so that they can do their end of year accounting for you now all of these trackers are of course planted across properties inside of figured and it's here where you can then begin recording the different types of properties that you have whether they're owned or rented as well as breaking down into different types of fields this drives the three different levels of reporting that's inside of figured beginning at field level profitability moving up to harvest year or season profitability and then the highest level that we do is looking at different products so say comparing my wheat to my oats so we get field season or harvest year and then product figured in terms of data entry is done in two ways we can either pull data from zero and apply it to these trackers inside of figured or depending on what works best for you you can also take this and post invoices from figured into zero so for example if I look at some of my cattle I could go in and record a sale of some livestock so let's record an actual sale and anything that I record onto this invoice will then post through into zero that means that I can enter my data into figured first where it is more farming specific and it has all of these other fields that say zero doesn't carry like stock classes or weights if you want to go into that level of detail or we can take the data that's from zero and then apply it into figured so there's a two-way sync either posting invoices through to zero or receiving them and then allocating them out now to allocate them out we do that inside of the allocations tool here and you'll see I have this big number next to mine and that's telling me that I have 74 unallocated transactions now that means that I don't have to allocate every single one of them I can choose to say dismiss them like these drainage rates here or I can choose to allocate these to my different enterprises in this case for my feeds I'm going to choose to put some of this through to my dairy cattle and let's say I'm going to go put some of that through to my beef cattle as well and we can choose either a financial amount to split it by or a percentage for now I'm just going to click distribute equally 
Now this cost has been applied to those different enterprises, I'm taking a single transaction from zero, splitting it up, and then putting it into my different enterprises, and that's how we drive our gross margin reporting inside of Figured. If you ever want to see what's inside of Zero, you can click on that blue link here where it says bank transaction, or it may say invoice. And if you click on that, it'll then take you through to Zero to log in and then access and see the exact transaction that's underneath it. Now if you try to do everything piece by piece, even we'll admit that this will take quite a bit of time. So, to speed it up, we built rules inside of the allocator as well. Now these rules can be driven by the account name from your nominal code. In this case I've got all of mine here, or all of the expense or revenue accounts. Or we can drive it by tracking options inside of Xero. And the tracking options let you do a lot of this tagging first inside of Xero before it even hits figured, so that when it hits figured you could say that anything that is related to wheat always goes through to my wheat tracker. Now that doesn't always have to be the case. In this case, I'm going to bring up, say, that drainage account. And I can say that should always be dismissed, so that it never comes up again. I could also create a rule to, say, split my feed out across my different livestock trackers. I could bring in, say, certain overheads like fuel or machinery and apply that through to my operations trackers for my arable. But these rules are where you automate the majority of this work, and again, this is all for driving that now reporting that we looked at earlier, and it's for driving that sense of what gross margins are across different enterprises. Now the output of that is all done inside of our reports. Whether you're looking at the core financial reports like a P&L or a profit and loss or a balance sheet, or looking through and looking at your production reports, like breaking things down on a pounds per hectare or on a pound per uh, sorry a pound per livestock unit. If you look at the cost of production for livestock, that's where we're looking at our gross margin for our different livestock enterprises. For example, you could split out your herd by breeding, finishing, young stock, and then get gross margins for each option. Or the crop season summary, which is where you compare and you review your different crop season profitabilities. So now that it gives us an understanding of the now, that's handled inside of trackers, and it's handled inside of the allocator for splitting things out and generating gross margins. Once you have a good sense of what's happening now on the farm, you can start to look forward into the future, and that's done inside of our scenarios tool. Now if you want to do a deep dive into how scenarios work, we do have a fantastic webinar series on our YouTube channel and we can send you through the link if you want. Um, but at a very quick glance, when we look at our scenarios, the first place that I generally start is by looking at a status quo. That's assuming that every year is the same as the last. Now with the status quo, I've actually pulled a whole lot of data through from zero. So I've pulled through my income and my expenses. We then get to see across our different trackers again, or other income. And let's say I then spread that across. I can then copy that across the five-year period to very quickly build out a plan. Now you may find that a status quo is a great way to start. Another interesting place to start now would be looking at the changes to the basic payment scheme that were recently announced. So you'd be able to say plan what happens with that first cut, and then the second, and then the third, and then the fourth. And then once more information is revealed about the uh, investment of, uh, funds that the government will be announcing, you'll then be able to start playing with adding assets or uh, seeing how you can fund big changes to your farm. We find that scenarios are really useful for people who uh, need to make loan applications, people who are looking to do succession planning, or those who are looking to change their enterprise, or even just look at things like loan consolidation. There's a lot of worlds where this is really powerful, uh, and the output of all of this is twofold. A scenario will give you two different types of outputs. One of them is a group of financial reports. So you get the summary giving you a quick sense check and running things on like a pounds per hectare basis. But then you can also run a P&L, a cash flow, and a balance sheet. Great for lenders, great for being able to present uh, very quickly to get a, a top-down view of the farm. But what I usually lead with isn't actually the financial reports. 
I'll usually lead with these indicators and these give us a visual sense for what's happening on the farm. So instead of looking specifically at the numbers across every five year, I can look at the trend for my net profit. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? In this case, I can see my closing cash position is increasing wildly. What could I do with that money? What could I invest it in? Do I need to uh, adjust my drawings? Maybe we can start taking a bit more out of the business or keep putting more into it. Same here for things like our equity position. Is this growing? Is this going to fuel our ambitions for, say, succession planning in the next couple of years? So we have scenarios for an understanding of where the farm is going to go, looking at a very high level year by year annually. We've touched on the operations for getting a sense of what's happening now, looking at trackers and allocations. The final part of this whirlwind tour is to then take you through very quickly what our planning tool looks like. And this is for building out a, pl a monthly plan working month by month into the future. Now I'm going to take us back a step and I'm going to look at 2021 because I still have a few more months left on my plan. This means that I can use that zero data that we worked on to understand the now to form the opening part of our plan. So in this case, you can see I've already got my different trackers all broken out here. And then I can see some of my other operating expenses flowing through here. So I've got some zero data. And then Figit allows you just to plan with that forwards. So in my case, with actual set to last month, I have all of my December, January, February, March, all ready to start planning. And all I need to do is just plug those figures directly into the grid. This planning grid is designed for your other income and expenses. And it's this other income and expenses, which is for the non-farming specific part. So nothing that involves the trackers. This is just for other income and expenses. You build out your plans inside of the trackers themselves by adding transactions. So by recording planned harvests or recording planned purchases of feed or of seeds of fruit and spray. Um, but it's inside of this planning here that we then get to see everything else inside of it. And there's a few other smarts that are inside of here too. Because Figure knows how you spent your money last year if you've got that data inside of zero, you can use the smart spreading tool here to then spread the money across a curve. So rather than having to plan month by month, knowing that farming is a very seasonal business, we could say plug in a figure, spread it along that curve, and then we'll automatically update it towards the end of the year so that you then have that same kind of built-in seasonality. We can do this for all of our different types of accounts and you'll see that the planning grid automatically saves for us. You can do your planning on either a cash basis or on a profit basis. And when you're ready to take a copy of this and to lock it down so that you've got a saved version of your forecast, you can take a snapshot. This snapshot saves a revision of your plan so that you've got it frozen in time and then when you have more data flow through from zero, so more of those actuals, you'll then be able to compare it to this snapshot without worrying about any kind of changes. Snapshots are also great if you have different revisions of your forecast. So if you decide to make a few different copies, you can work through with that, build out one snapshot, take another one, edit that forecast, and then when it comes to doing your reporting, you can choose which snapshot to compare to. When you're ready to start planning into the next year, change that date selector forward by one more year, and you'll get this rolling plan where last year's closing forms this year's opening. And it's from here that you can then move all the way forward into the future and build out your plan to be monthly as long or as short as you like. So this is how we're going to put that plan in action. You may find that using the scenarios tool is great for coming up with where you want to go. You may have your own ambitions or your own goals or a budget already in your head or in an Excel spreadsheet, which you can adapt through to here. If you do have it in other forms, you can import plans into here, either by using last year's actuals, using one of those snapshots that you built out, so copying last year's plan to this year, or you can import from a file, and if you download the template, we then give you a structured template to adapt your existing data through to so you can import it into Figit. And that's our now, our where, and our how. Using the trackers for an understanding of our enterprises and the gross margins of those enterprises, 
using the allocations tool in order to split out our transactions and make sure they go to the right enterprise. Using the scenarios tool so that we can come up with where we want to take the business. And then using the planning grid here in order to then plan exactly how we're going to put that into action by having this live rolling forecast and then taking different revisions and different snapshots of that. Finally, all of this comes together inside of the reports that are inside of Figured, and you'll see there's a large variety of them ranging from financial through to production and tracker reports. If we take one of these reports, for example, I'm going to bring up the cash flow. You'll see that we have additional options on the right hand side. And it's under these additional options where we can start bringing in different views. So maybe we could compare this to last year, compare it to our snapshot that we just took. We can bring in quantities into this cash flow report as well view it either on a monthly or an annual basis. And each of the different types of reports that are inside of Figured will have these additional options. You can read more about the different types of reports that we have inside of our Help Center. When we hit Run Report, we then start to augment all of that. And you'll see in this specific example, we're running a cash flow, which is just our plan for this year, comparing it to how we were going last year. So we can see that we have this comparison line across it all. Bearing in mind that this is a demo farm, so the data isn't quite as detailed as a real farm will be. In this case, I've also brought in some quantity, so I can see the liters that were alongside my milk production too. And then finally, when I'm ready to share this report, I can click Share, export it through to a PDF, which can have a logo or a disclaimer at the bottom of it. Download it to CSV if we want to pull this into Excel for a little bit more further analysis and then save that report. And if we save the report, this is gonna take a copy of it at this moment in time with exactly these settings. And this is how you can then add your comments and your annotations around a report. So we'll just give that a tick and then you'll be able to see, here's our report, all of that detail that we had. And if we click on one of the numbers, we can then add a comment, say, seems a little high add that comment and then I can share this onwards to someone else whether it's another banker or whether it's through to uh, another member of that farming team or a farm manager you have lots of flexibility and when you do share a report in this way it'll only get shared exactly what you see on the screen so they won't have access to the rest of your figured file if you do want to invite someone into your figured file you can do that inside of settings and it's under the People tab here that you can then invite more into, as well as turn on features like the multi-farm that's inside of Figured, which allows you to have multiple farms inside of a single zero file. If you want to know more about that, I recommend reaching out to our team. We can take you through exactly how this works and how your zero needs to be set up. But at a glance, multi-farm then allows you to have a drop down at the top of the page so you can choose specifically which farm or which non-farming business you're working on so you can have individual budgets that then all build together for a consolidated budget as well. Finally, if you have any questions while you're using Figured, reach out to our team using the green chat bubble on the bottom right hand corner of the page. This is where our live chat is and we do our chat out of the UK. Um, outside of UK business hours, we then pass through to the New Zealand team, the team in North America and with Australia. So you'll always have someone on hand who's available to answer your questions and we all have a detailed either accounting or agri background. This is also where you can find our help centre so you can ask us questions and look through some of the pre-existing docs that were written. And if you have any ideas for new feature suggestions or requests, you can give feedback here, which will then show you a list of everything else that other people have recommended or suggested inside of the Figured community, and then add your votes and your commentary to it. So that wraps up what we're going to be running through in terms of the product here today. Thank you very much for listening, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask us through the Zoom chat. In the meantime, I'm now going to pass over to my colleague, Patty, who's going to be able to answer any of those questions and take you through any one-on-one -on -one challenges that you may have inside of the product.
So thank you very much, and I look forward to talking to you soon.